Hi there and welcome to this video on GCSE biology focusing on cell division and in particular mitosis and the cell cycle. I'm Shumana from StudyMind where we help you revise GCSE biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to tutorial two of three on our lecture series on cell division. Today we're going to be looking at mitosis and the cell cycle. So in our last lesson we looked at chromosomes which remember are the structures that contain our DNA and they're found in pairs in our cells because we inherit one set from our mother and one from our father. So today we're going to be looking at mitosis and the cell cycle which involves these chromosomes that we were looking at in our previous lesson. So we're going to be exploring the stages of mitosis, which include interphase, mitosis itself, and then cytokinesis at the end. And just to finish up, we're going to look at why mitosis is so fundamental to the growth and development of cells. So let's move on to our first tutorial specification point. So cells divide in a series of stages called the cell cycle and you've got to be able to describe these stages. So the cell cycle is how cells duplicate and divide, and it's a set of steps that take place in cell division. So cells need to be dividing all the time to replace dead cells for growth and for repair. So the length of the cell cycle can vary between organisms, and it depends on the type of cell that we're talking about. So if it's a cell that's turned over very quickly on a regular basis, for example, hair follicles or skin cells, um, then they're going to have to have a quicker cell cycle and so divide fast. So let's have a look at some of these stages of the cell cycle. So first of all, let's look at the first stage, which is interphase. So I like to think of interphase as the kind of prepping stage for mitosis. So I'll just make that note here, that might help you. So it's where the cell is prepping for mitosis. So in order for the cell to be ready to divide and for the, you know, for the cell to undergo mitosis, um, the cell has to go through interphase in which it grows in size and its DNA duplicates and new organelles are made. Because remember, at the end of mitosis, we're going to end up with two daughter cells. So we're going to need more DNA. We're going to need more organelles. So the second phase is metaphase. And this is where the genetic material separates and the cell is now ready to divide into two daughter cells. And at the end of all of this, we're going to get cytokinesis. So if we actually look at what this word means, kine kinesis means movement and cyto is cell. So it's cell movement and it's actually the movement of the cell in which it splits apart into two separate cells. And so this is where the parent cell splits into its two daughter cells. So the cytoplasm has to split in half and the cell membrane has to come around to these two halves of the cytoplasm in order to form two new daughter cells. So let's just have a look at this in a little more detail. So, so in our parent cell, we have our um, pairs of chromosomes as you can see here. So we've got one from the mother and one from the father. This cell is just showing two sets of chromosomes here. And then the cell is going through interphase in which we're going to get DNA duplication. So now you can see that we've got two copies of the maternal chromosome and two copies of the paternal chromosome. And then once the cell has undergone mitosis, we're back to essentially a mirror image of what the parent cell is. So if you compare the parent cell to the two daughter cells, we're gonna see the exact same scenario here. So again, we've got our two copies, one from the mother and one from the father of each chromosome. 
So don't worry if this doesn't quite make sense right now because we're going to break this down even further and look at it in more detail. So let's move on to our next few specification points. So remember, in interphase, the genetic material is doubled and then, and then we're going to see a split of the cell into two identical daughter cells. So interphase is actually the longest stage of the cell cycle. It takes up the majority of the cell cycle because the cell undergoes so many changes. And just to name a few, that involves DNA replication because the cell has to double its amount of DNA so that it can then distribute this between its daughter cells. But also we're gonna see cell growth and production of new organelles. So new organelles need to be produced because not only when the parent cell splits into the two daughter cells, does the parent cell need to give um, genetic information to the daughter cells, but also it's got to redistribute its mitochondria and its ribosomes and other organelles to its daughter cells. So, to summarise, we would see an increase in mitochondria number for energy, because remember, mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. And protein synthesis requires energy, so this energy is all provided by mitochondria. So we're going to see a general increase in mitochondria in the parent cell in order to support this whole process of mitosis. We're also going to see an increase in ribosomes. So remember, ribosomes are our protein factory, and protein synthesis occurs in the ribosomes, and therefore ribosomes must be made right by the original cell because in order to form the daughter cells, we're gonna to have to be synthesizing a lot more protein. And we're also gonna be seeing cell growth, as I said earlier. So the cell surface membrane will extend outwards as the cytoplasm grows. So now let's have a look further into mitosis. So mitosis is defined as the division of the parent cell into two genetically identical daughter cells. So that's really, really important for you to remember. The daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell, and we saw that a few slides ago. So you might want to go back to that big diagram of the parent cell undergoing interphase and then mitosis. So the cell now at this stage has double the number of chromosomes because it's undergone interphase. It has more organelles and it's bigger. So it's ready to divide into two daughter cells. And this occurs in mitosis. So first of all, the chromosomes line up on the equator of the cell. So if I just draw that in here, we would probably call this part of the cell the equator of the cell. And this is where the chromosomes line up. The chromosomes are then pulled to opposite poles of the cell. So you can see these structures here, these long spindle-like structures. Well, they're called spindle fibres. And it's these spindle fibres that pull the chromosomes to the separate ends of the cells. Then we just have the last stage to undergo. So the chromosomes have been pulled to opposite poles of the cell, so now two new nuclei have formed. So new nuclei membranes have to be built around these nuclei so that they become two independent sets of nuclei. And this division of the nucleus into two marks the end of mitosis. So just bear in mind that many textbooks might go into a lot more detail about mitosis, um, but you don't have to learn all of that detail. Um, just stick to what we've described in this session and that should be okay. So now we've undergone mitosis, we've got our two separate nuclei at the poles of our cell. So now we just have one final stage to go through, which is cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm and cell membranes to surround the new nuclei that are formed. So this forms ultimately the two new daughter cells.
So it's important to understand that mitosis produces two genetically identical daughter cells. So as I said previously, they are identical to the original parent cell, as well as to each other. So mitosis of one cell produces two cells. Mitosis of four cells undergoing mitosis produces eight cells after one round of mitosis. So you always see a doubling in number of daughter cells compared to parent cells. So why is cell division by mitosis so important? Well, the key reason why we need mitosis is for growth. So just think about it for a second. So we all started off as one single fertilised egg cell, but we're now made up of millions and millions of cells. So how did we go from one egg cell to millions of cells? Well, it's through cell division by mitosis. So this just illustrates just how important mitosis is. And cells, even now, now that we're, you know, fully formed humans, our cells are constantly growing and dividing. And mitosis allows this to happen with the formation of identical daughter cells. So this is so important in all eukaryotic cells, and it's, and it's fundamental to our growth. So let's just take a little bit of a further look into specific scenarios in which mitosis might occur. So for example, in replacing skin cells. So when you touch an object, when you touch your keyboard now as you pause and replay this video, you're gonna be losing skin cells from your skin surface. And if you were losing your skin cells and not replacing them at a constant rate, then you're gonna be eroding away your fingers. So mitosis is essential here in continuously replacing um, skin cells and so there's actually a dividing actively dividing skin cell layer just be beneath your outer surface layer of skin which is responsible for doing this in addition as mentioned earlier we need mitosis for the growth of organisms um, so remember um, organisms start off from being a single fertilized egg cell to then being big multicellular organisms and in order for that to happen we need mitosis and lastly, mitosis is really, really fundamental in the process of asexual reproduction. So single-celled organelles, sorry, single-celled organisms reproduce to produce two daughter organisms. So this isn't relevant to us as humans because we undergo sexual reproduction, but for example, um, a, a single-celled organ, organism, like a, bac a bacterium, for example, may undergo asexual reproduction in which it itself divides to produce two daughter organisms, and this, this occurs by mitosis. Oops. So, that's all our specification points covered for today. So, well done, we covered quite a bit, so feel free to go back and pause the video at any point. And I shall see you for lesson three. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.